I would say it was about two years ago, I was in what we call a backslidden state. Then the Holy Spirit called me into the ministry. My name is Abby Genius, and this is my testimony. I grew up in a family, um, mother and father, mother a devout Christian, um, her Christian walk, her love for God, her passion for the word, her faith was always such an inspiration to me. Um, she'd read the Bible to my siblings and myself. There was like eight of us total. And then my dad um, was a non-believer. So I always kind of felt like at that time there was a balance because my mom always taught us to show the love of Jesus Christ um, to everyone, wherever we went. And even when people sometimes don't treat you the way they, you, that you feel you should be treated, show the love of Christ regardless. My dad, on the other hand, felt like that was weakness. And so he taught us to trust no one, shoot anyone. I grew up in a family of high-end drug dealers, a family of killers, professional thieves, um, prostitutes, thugs. I actually held my first gun when I was six years old. And I recognized, even at an early age, the call of God on my life. But for many, many years, I lived a, what the church calls a, a backslidden state away from God. And as a matter of fact, uh, during my adult life, uh, for some years, I had gotten involved in a relationship that I had no business being involved in in the first place. And it was within that relationship, um, it pretty much took everything from me, almost my life, um, almost my very soul. I had no hope for living. Um, I was chronically depressed, seeing two psych psychiatrists, um, taking Lexipro, um, and just hearing voices in my head uh, on a regular basis to just take my life. And I came close to doing that several times. And I realized also that in this country, also around the world, mental illness is something that people deal with on a regular basis. And so this testimony is to encourage you, if that's something that you're dealing with, um, that Jesus, when you're way down, he can still pick you up. He, he's in the habit of changing lives every day. Miracles still happen. Um, so over the course of time, um, I finally was able to break free of that relationship, but because of where I was uh, spiritually dead, anything's possible, I worked for two escort services. I got involved in stripping and dancing um, and made a lot of money doing it. Um, and it was during that time that the Holy Spirit actually called me into the ministry. So I also have a, be a heavy background as far as theater, uh, writing, producing, directing, uh, Christian uh, productions. And I basically wore a mask. So in the church, doing church work, church business, um, I walked the walk and talked the talk, but Jesus was not Lord of my life. And so in the year of 2011, I was at home visiting with family and friends and also um, directing, producing a uh, production called The King of Glory, which at that time was in its eighth year of running. And um, I was maybe like a day or two um, away from flying out of Toledo, Ohio, back to Florida, which is where I live now. and. Um, Right before I decided to come here, my family and I and lots of friends, we had all gathered at the Golden Corral restaurant there for just some fellowship and fun before I headed back to Florida. And in the course of things that took place on that day, as I sat there across from my brother and we're just all talking, I noticed a man approaching the table. 
And I actually figured that he knew my brother because I didn't live there. But as he got closer to the table and turned around and talked to my brother, I realized my brother didn't know him either because he actually introduced himself as being Carnell Morrell. And for those of you who don't know who Carnell Morrell is and those of you who do know, um, he's a national uh, recording artist, gospel recording artist, also a national uh, producer and um, a minister of the gospel. He moves in the prophetic. And so after he had introduced himself to my brother, he turned his attention to me. And he said that as he sat down to take his first bite um, from the meal he was having, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him to come to my table. He had a word to give me. And so as he stood there and began to speak, I was always one who was skeptical about prophecy. I, I just didn't believe in it too much because I felt like if God had a word for me, then he could just tell me, why would he tell someone else? But the thing that caught my attention was Carnell began to say, you know, the Holy Spirit told me you just released your first CD. And that was right on the nail head. So of course that caught my attention. And then he began to say that God said, as your hands go up before him in worship, to true worship in spirit and in truth, that God said he would elevate your music and that your music would go all over the world and you would share your testimony with many and many would come to the Lord and that um, he would open the doors of television and film, radio, any um, social media uh, known to mankind for the gospel's sake. Now at the time, after that was spoken, because of where I was still, stripping, dancing, doing what I was doing, I kind of felt like, well, Holy Spirit, you missed this one. You must have read the wrong resume. But it's amazing because when we have our own agenda, our own plans, God can interrupt those plans at any point in time. I'm a living testimony of that, like I'm sure a lot of you, uh, the viewing audience, are as well. Um, I had planned on, once I came back from um, Ohio and back to Florida, to start my own escort service because I felt like I had had um, a lot of success in that, if I could call it success. But um, like I said, God interrupted my plans. So I get back to Florida um, the next day. Oh, and I want to say this one thing. Before Carnell uh, finished speaking to me, the Holy Spirit also said, I want to tell you something. He said, when you get back to Florida, one of your best friends is going to walk out your life for no reason and nothing that you did. And sure enough, when I get back, that's exactly what happened. And so I'm like, wow, God, you said that would happen. And it did. And so then I find myself being driven to church, which was by the Holy Spirit is what I mean which was something that I hadn't planned on and intend on doing as far as being a part of the local church. I hadn't been a part in years. And so I ended up at Paula White Ministries, New Destiny Christian Center, recognized the anointing because, like I said, the example that I saw um, through my mom, the ministry there. And so I remember going that morning and joining the service. She invited everyone back and said there'd be a prayer line. Holy Spirit, once again, must have driven me there because I hadn't been involved in church in years. So as I get back to church that night, there's this prayer line going on after she finished ministering, and I had no intentions getting in the line. I cannot tell you this day or how I ended up in this prayer line. And as she laid hands on me and she began to pray, I remember she began to bind and cast out and impart the Spirit of God in my life. And I remember I was angry because she said, God said some people look like they have it all together and they're so messed up on the inside. And God said, the word for you is victimized. So I'm like, Holy Spirit, how are you gonna just put my business out there like that on blast? So I'm mad standing at the altar. I go home angry, didn't realize that I had been delivered from those spirits that I was, had been oppressed by for many years and also delivered from a suicidal spirit, no longer on Lexapro. Um, but one thing I realized the next day after I woke up, I, there was such a hunger and thirst in me for righteousness and for the things of God. And I began 
to just crave the word and, and literally on my face before God crying out, not to make me a success, but to create in me, oh God, a clean heart, renew your spirit within me. And um, I remember from 2012 all the way to 2013, January, that's the pretty much the position I was in, just crying out to God until the Holy Spirit did a work within me first and then able to do it through me. So then he did a lot of amazing connections in the year of 2013. Um, with the Orlando Sentinel here, Nancy Zimmerman, uh, Pastor David at First Baptist Church of Orlando, um, with Pam Morris, WKB Radio, um, and the list just goes on and on and on. Um, I just uh, just about finished with my first original um, single release, which will go forth in about three weeks. Um, just finished my autobiography, which is getting ready to go for editing and publishing and getting ready to work on a movie that we're working to get in the movie theaters and just a lot of things happening like God said it would. But I remember he said, I cannot use you the way you are. Um, I have need of thee, but there's two things that I require in order for there to be a great move of the Holy Spirit. And that is being totally sold out to God and then also allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and just have his way. And that's the only way there'll be a great move of God. And so after 2013, um, just allowing the Holy Spirit again to do a work in me and just being in his presence daily, praying and um, praying in my prayer language. Um, then in 2014, transitioned into full-time ministry. And what's so amazing about that is what I mostly hear is not people so much saying, you know, oh, you seem great, you look great. No, because that's what the world looks at. And that's why God said, I'm calling you in this ministry as far as um, music and television and film, because not only is entertainment in the world, it has also crept into the church. And a lot of church folk like I was believe that you can have one foot in and one foot out. But God said, no, be ye holy for I'm holy. Without holiness, no man, no woman, no boy, no, nor girl shall see God. And I was hell bound. And you can't make, wear a mask when you're living for God. You got to make a decision. Choose ye this day whom you'll serve. Well, I made that decision. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And the thing that I notice is people coming saying, what must I do to be saved? after I leave the platform. And the Holy Spirit said, that's how you know. It's a true work of the Spirit. And when, it's when people are asking for salvation. And that's what we should seek after because that's the heart of God, souls. And he told me to share my testimony um, every time I get up and I take the mic and let the world know that Jesus still loves them. He's delivering people, setting people free every day. Miracles are still happening. And then he gives us the Holy Spirit to walk out that salvation. And then also with demonstration and power. And then he said, one last thing, let the world know that Jesus is soon to come. The next event on heaven's calendar is the rapture. And he said, that's the only reason why I'm allowing you to take this platform, not because I need an entertainer, another entertainer, um, as far as the music industry or even Hollywood is concerned, but someone who's going to carry the anointing um, and just let the world know that Jesus loves him and that he's coming back soon. You see, Satan is a deceiver. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. And just like he tried to destroy me, just like he did with Eve in the garden. He'll say to you, did God really say that you need to live holy? Did God really say that if you take your life, you're going to heaven? Did God really say? So he's deceiving men, women, boys, and girls every day. So if you're away from God, give your life to Jesus. He loves you and he's soon to come. And finally, I'd like to say, you know, since I've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, it used to be so irritating being with my mom and she's, you know, sharing the gospel with people. When you have the Holy Ghost in you, you can't keep it to yourself. Like Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. And, and Jesus is saving the lost. 
Um, it doesn't matter where I am, if it's in the grocery store, if it's at the mall, I, I just can't keep it to myself because he's been so good to me. And I just like to say, if you're in a bad place, just know that God loves you and he has purpose for your life too when you yield and surrender your life to him. And this is part of my testimony and just like to say the best is yet to come. My name is Abby Genius and God bless you.